In this video, we're going to look at the Unit 6 Lesson 13 practice problems. So this says graph the equations for the circle x minus 2 squared plus y plus 3 squared equals 36 and the line x equals 6, and then determine where they intersect. So let's go ahead and get the center of um, the circle. So the center is at 2, negative 3. So we can pull that from the equation. And then the radius, 36, is our r squared. So our radius is 6. So we'll go ahead um, and plot these. So let's find that center first. So the center is the point 2, negative 3. And then we can go ahead, and if you have a compass, you can do this um, with your compass and count out six. So one, two, three, four, five, six to get a radius of six and draw that. Um, you can also just count, um, whoops, count left, right, up and down six units. Okay, so you could go and just count one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and kind of get six to the left, six up, and six down to kind of give you an idea of where that circle is going to go as well. All right, then this one also wanted us to graph the line x equals 2. So x equals 2 is a vertical line, okay, where all of the x's are equal to 2. So right there. And then see where these intersect and then verify it. So here we're at two, three, it looks like. Okay, and down here, it looks like we're at two, negative nine. Now, the nice thing about this is it's right through the center. Okay, so the center here is two, negative three. So we can just actually count the distance here to verify that it's on the circle. So the, dif the difference from negative three to three is six which matches this radius. So this point is on our circle. And then negative three to negative nine is a difference of six, which again matches the radius. So this is on our circle and it's got that X value of two. Okay, for this one, select all equations in which the point two negative three is on the graph. So we're going to go up ahead and plug these into the equations and just see if they equal. Okay, if both sides are equal, then the point is on the graph. So the y-coordinate is negative 3, and the x-coordinate is 2. So negative 3 minus 3 is negative 6. 2 minus 2 is 0. Those do not equal, so it is not on this equation. This one will do 4 times the x-coordinate of 2 um, plus negative 3 for the y and see if that equals 5. So this is 8 plus negative 3, which does equal 5, so that's good. Plug in negative 3 for y, so negative 3 equals 5 times the x-coordinate of 2 minus 13. So does negative 3 equal 10 minus 13? And it does. Plug in um, 2 squared plus negative 3 squared. Does that equal 13? So 2 squared is 4. 3 squared is 9, which does equal 13. So the point is on this circle. Okay, plug in 2 for x, negative 3 for y. So 2 minus 2 is 0 squared. Negative 3 minus negative 3. So that's negative 3 plus 3. That's another 0. Okay, that definitely does not equal 25 because that is actually the center of that circle. Um, plug in negative 3 here. So we have negative 3. Does that equal 2 minus 2 squared plus 3? So negative 3, does that equal 0 plus 3? And that is no. And then the final one, the y is negative 3. The x is 2 squared 
So does negative three equal four minus seven? And it does, so that is on the circle. All right, this image shows the graph of a parabola whose focus is at um, three, four. So the focus of this is at three, four. And the directrix is y equals two. So here's the line y equals two. And then the um, line given by y equals four, so they have that plotted as well. So y equals four is right here. Um, find and verify points where the parabola and the line intersect. Okay, so let's look for points where this line y equals four intersects the parabola. So it looks to be here and here. And then let's verify it. So remember, if these are on our parabola, they are going to be the same distance from the directrix as they are from the focus. So this distance here will be the same as this distance here, and we can just count that. Okay, so we can just count that the distance straight down to the directrix is two from this line, and it's two over to the focus. Um, so the point one, four, so this is the point one, four, is definitely on our parabola, and the line y equals four. And then we can do the same thing over here. So this point is two from the directrix and two from the focus. So that is on the parabola, and that is the point five, four. All right, line L is graphed. What are um, right equations for four different lines that are perpendicular to the line? So perpendicular need, means you're going to need the slope of this line, and then you're going to need to do the opposite reciprocal. So the slope of this line, okay, it's going down. So the slope is negative one half here. So a perpendicular slope is going to be the opposite, so positive and the reciprocal too. So the four equations you write need to have um, a slope of two. So you could write y equals two x. You could write y minus seven equals two times x plus three. Okay, anything, adding or subtracting and changing anything there, just making sure um, that you've got a slope of two in all of them. Okay, number five, write an equation whose graph is a line perpendicular to y equals four and passes through the point two, five. So a couple of things going on here. So we've got perpendicular, okay? So we want it perpendicular to the line. And then this line y equals four, this is a horizontal line. So if we think about um, what this line looks like, Okay, this line is the line going through the y value of four and horizontal. So we want perpendicular to that. So remember, perpendicular to a horizontal would be a vertical. Okay, so we're going to want a vertical line that goes through the point two, five. So remember, vertical lines are x equals lines. So we want this point, well, not that point. Um, we want it to go through the point two, five. So remember, vertical lines are x equals lines. So what's the x coordinate of this vertical line would be two to go through that point. So x equals two would be the line perpendicular. If we wanted the line parallel, okay, we would have had another horizontal and then this would be a y line. So y equals five would have been the parallel line. X equals two is the perpendicular line. Okay, select all lines that are perpendicular to this one. So looking at those slopes again. So the slope of this one is negative two thirds. So perpendicular to that would be positive and the flip. So we're looking for slopes of positive three halves. So let's look at any that are easily identifiable as yes or no. So this one has the three halves. So this one is perpendicular. This one is negative two thirds, so that is not perpendicular. That would be parallel. And then this last one has the three halves slope, so this one is perpendicular. 
So then B and C just require a little bit of work. Um, so we're going to solve for Y here. So subtract 3X from both sides and then divide by that negative 2 would be the slope. Again, um, you can actually write this out to see this happening. So minus 3X here would give you negative 2Y equals negative 3X plus 2. And then you'd be dividing by negative 2 to both sides. So this would be giving you your slope. So that's what I'm writing down. And then negative 3 divided by negative 2 is just positive 3 halves, which does match our perpendicular slope. So then this one isn't going to work since those numbers aren't the same. Um, but you can think about it again. Subtract 3x and then divide by 2. That's going to give you negative 3 halves instead of positive. Select lines parallel to this. Okay, so parallel means we want to keep the same slope. So let's subtract 3x to both sides and then divide by negative 2. So this slope is positive 3 halves. So we want to look for positive 3 halves slopes. They will be parallel. So there's one. Negative 3 halves, not. 2 thirds, not. So let's take a look at this one and see if it is. So the slope here, we would subtract 6x from both sides, and then we would divide by 4. Negative 6 divided by 4 is negative 3 halves, so that is not. Okay, and this one said select the line, so there's only going to be one answer. But making sure that the rest of them didn't work out in case we made a mistake. Explain how you could tell whether x squared plus bx plus c is a perfect square trinomial. So remember, this is where we looked at the middle term. And so that middle term had a b. And remember, we did, we took the middle term and we divided it by 2. And then after we divided it by 2, we squared it. So if c is equal to b divided by 2 squared, then you would have a perfect square trinomial. So if I like looked at an example here, so if we did this, okay, 8 divided by 2 squared, so 8 divided by 2 is 4, squared is 16, that matches this, so this is a perfect square trinomial. So this is the just general form to write that without a number, so b divided by 2 squared, then you've got a perfect square trinomial.